President Barack Obama, Bernie Sanders, and Hillary Clinton have all both expressed empathy and sympathy for the victims of the Orlando shooting and their families, but they've also, much more importantly, pushed for legislative changes that would actually stop these sorts of attacks from happening in the future. So that's on the Democratic side, but on the Republican side, the highest profile Republican currently, Donald Trump, hasn't been able to say almost anything that's not incredibly offensive to those grieving uh, today. He also hasn't been able to say anything even remotely accurate. So I want you to watch this video and how little he feels he needs to know about the shooting before talking about it on the news or tweeting about it, as he so often does. If you had guns on the other side, you wouldn't have had the tragedy that you had. If people in that room But there had was, guns, I mean, but Mr. The Trump, there was an armed the security, there was an armed right security him, guard. Right at his head. You wouldn't have had the same tragedy that you ended up having, and nobody even knows how bad that tragedy is. But if you had guns in that room, if you had, even if you had a number of people having a strapped to their ankle or strapped to their waist, where bullets could have flown in the other direction right at him, you wouldn't have had the same kind of a tragedy. So obviously his overall message is 100% accurate. Thankfully, the reporter attempting to get him to realize what reality was and to come back to it, but he refused to. And the reporter in that case was right. A uniformed off-duty police officer working security at the club responded. He and two other officers exchanged gunfire with the suspect, according to officials. This was right outside as the guy was working his way into the club. Three people with guns, bullets flying at him, as Donald Trump would say, and that did not stop 50 people from being killed because, of course, the guy had an assault rifle. Well, 49, because you don't want to count. Right, them. 49, yes, uh, and over 50 injured. The way that he talks about these sorts of events, first of all, he betrays how little interest he has in the actual facts by saying nobody even knows how bad it is. He always comes back to that on everything that's a mess, everything that's a disaster. Nobody knows, nobody understands, because he doesn't know and he doesn't understand. And he didn't care enough to actually find out anything about what was happening in this before talking about it. The simple fact that there were three off-duty officers who attempted at risk to their own lives while working security to stop this man. So he has totally pushed them into the shadows. They don't matter. He doesn't care about them. So that he can continue to spread this entirely uh, false misconception that he always goes back to that if only there were more people firing bullets at each other, that there would never be any evil in the world. Yeah, and on a day in which he revokes, he, he's constantly revoking the press credentials of, of, of from the Des Moines Register to the Huffington Post. Today, the Washington Post just had their press credentials revoked. So he is such an adherent to the Second Amendment. Anything for the Second Amendment. When it comes to the First Amendment, well, we're going to draw the line there. Yeah. So the hypocrisy is even subtle. You know, sometimes it's as overt as we just saw. Sometimes it is so subtle because he's he's latching onto these guns. Imagine if people had guns in their on, on their ankles or what, what did he say on their ankles or their an, waists or their waists. Even what, if they had right. them on their ankles or their waists. Yeah, like that would stop. So these people go mind. into these. Yeah, he is a deranged mind, and we didn't even talk about mental illness as it comes into this. And I know you didn't omit it because you have you've forgotten about it because we've talked about it. it just didn't come into play yet mm -hmm. in this in this tragedy. But he. Is, there's something off with this guy, and I think that might be, you know, his undoing. That may be the understatement of the year. Yeah, that there's that something off bit. with this guy. No, but I, yeah, well, that's that's true. But understatement is kind of classy. It is classy. Yeah. I'll give it to you. And uh, look, he. So the first thing he tweeted about this, he was acting as a news outlet. He had plagiarized from someone else's tweet about the facts. Someone put them side to side. It's the exact thing with a couple of misspellings on Trump's part uh, about what had actually happened. And then, if like, imagine it's President Trump and this sort of attack happens, how would he respond? Would there be even a glimmer of hope that some sort of law would change? It wouldn't matter how he respond because there would only be two people in the press room. So it wouldn't, we, wouldn't it would, we wouldn't know how he responded, how he responded actually, <laughs> yes. Well, he would tweet about it, certainly. Yeah. Okay, so let's play video three uh, where he shows he gets so much credit for being different from other Republicans. Let's take a look and see how different he is. What I want them to do is be tough and vigilant. Our government, we're led by a man that is a very, very look, right. we're led by a man that either is, is, is not tough, not smart, or he's got something else in mind. And there's something else in mind, you know, people can't believe it. People cannot be, uh, they cannot believe that President Obama is acting the way he acts and can't even mention the words radical Islamic terrorism. There's something going on. It's inconceivable. Right. There's something no. going on. 
I just don't get it. I, I, he, first of all, he's not specific about anything except for Obama doesn't say radical Islamic terrorism. By the way, he addressed terrorism in his speech after the shooting. Okay, let's all say it in unison. Radical, radical Islamic, Islamic terrorism. terrorism. Let's say it again. Sure. Radical, radical Islamic, Islamic terrorism. terrorism. Oh my God, a solution. No, it doesn't fucking work like that. You need real solutions. You can't say that you're worried about radical Islamic terrorism and then in the same breath argue, well, we got to make sure that people on the terrorist watch list have access to guns because just because they're on a list, we can't take their constitutional rights away. Then you're not genuinely threatened by radical Islamic terrorism if you're not fighting against these laws. Okay, yeah. you're not generally threatened. What you're really concerned about is how much you fucking hate Muslims, and so you just want to talk about that and how much you want to ban them. If you're genuinely worried about radical Islamic terrorism in the United States, you would ensure that it's more difficult for people to get a gun, especially if they're on a terrorist watch list. They're so disingenuous. It's all about exploiting a tragedy for political gain, and it fucking disgusts me. Yeah, they've never once expressed, and there are, there are idiots on both sides that believe that somehow magically this is the cure. I love Harry Potter. They've watched it too much if they think that words have this magical ability to change reality. By simply saying this, well, clearly, if we call it that, they won't be able to, they won't just go and buy an AR-15 and shoot up a place as they have been every couple of months. Uh, he also went on to say that the solution is going to be more bombing in the Middle East. So that's cool. That's that will definitely really well for it. us so far, by um, the way. I think that if you bomb the Middle East, then, then people who are sympathetic to ISIS here will be cowed. I think they won't want to do anything if you just bomb the Middle East. But that's what he actually thinks. And so the solution from this maverick, who is so different than the other Republicans, is to call it radical Islamic terrorism and bomb as many people as you can in the Middle East. Now, granted, and he would add... And bring guns to clubs. Bring guns to clubs, uh, which isn't a bad idea when people are drinking and tensions are high. And also, he would kill the family members of suspected terrorists. So suspected terrorists in America should be able to be given guns. Suspected terrorist families in the Middle East should be murdered. You know, right. can you imagine tweeting out uh, on 9-12, uh, hey, I appreciate the congrats <laughs> about, <laughs> about Islamic terrorism. I don't know, you back, appreciate it, but I don't need it. I was right about it. Look what they did to the Twin Towers. Appreciate the congrats. That's what he fucking starts. This is like, <laughs> I appreciate the congrats. And then, and then later, I called it. I, could, I, I called it. it. I called it. He made the God. bold prediction and, that there would be terrorist attacks in the world. And he, yes, and he's yes, bold, very bold. And he says that I, I want toughness and vigilance. We must be smart. You know, it's so inspiring when a draft dodging rich kid tells us to be tough and vigilant. Yeah, I, I read today. I would be tough, if, but I have a bone spur. I would be tougher. O Obama's Obama's um, uh, grandfather was in World War II. There are six thousand Muslims currently in the U.S. Armed Services. Not one single member of Trump's family has ever served <laughs> in the military. <laughs> I, that but should be fact check because I read it today, but it, it, it rings true when I read it from somebody who's pretty reliable, so uh, I, or very reliable. Uh, it's just it's amazing that hypocrisy has always been amazing.